to them that are in Christ. That Christ shed his blood. That the Romans says here is amazing. There is therefore no condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. That you can have every mistake, every sin, everything that you've ever done wrong, forgiven. You can be forgiven today of every mistake that you've ever done. You can be forgiven by the cross, by Jesus Christ. By Christ who died on that cross. By Christ who died on that cross and gave his life for you on that cross. He shed blood that you may have life today. He had a crown of thorns on his head and he was dying on that cross and he was battered and blue and the blood came down and he hung on that cross but as he hung on that cross he was dying for you he was dying for you on that cross he was dying for you on that cross yeah he was dying for you on that cross there he hung with the blood coming down and a crown of thorns upon his head and the world laughed at him and mocked him the world thought he was stupid the world thought he was crazy but he said forgive them father for they know not what they do and he was hanging on that cross to save sinners to save sinners save people who were guilty before God and you've got to understand that if you want to appreciate the words there is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus if you want to appropriate those words for you that you can be forgiven that you can be cleansed that you can have every mistake forgiven in your life you have to understand that we're all sinners that is the first route to heaven is to know that we're all sinners Jesus said I've not come for the righteous but sinners and the Pharisees thought they were goody two-shoes. The, the Pharisees thought they were good. The Pharisees thought they were good. And so they didn't need Jesus. But Jesus went to the prostitutes. He went, he went to the prostitutes. He went to the needy. Jesus went to the needy. He went to the needy. And they found forgiveness in Jesus. They found forgiveness in Jesus. They found love in Jesus in their brokenness and in their mistakes and in their failure and in their frailty they found in Jesus a saviour a saviour that loved them a saviour that loved them a saviour that cared for them a saviour that died for them a saviour that pursued them a saviour that gave himself for them a saviour that gave himself for them and poured himself out for them. We go into the highways and byways. There was a guy in the tombs cutting himself. Nobody could help him. He was as mad as three three hatters. He was mad as anything. Nobody could help him. But when he came to Jesus, he said, "You're the Son of God." And Jesus cast out the demons in him, and that man became a man of God, and he went to be a preacher. Jesus, forgive. Hi, Dave. God, God bless you, brother. Jesus forgave the prostitutes, he forgave that woman who committed adultery and he did not condemn. And Jesus comes to you today, wherever you are, wherever you're at today, Jesus comes to you. You might be worried about your, your mortgage, you might be worried about your job, you might be worried about your future, you might be worried about so many things you're worried. But come to Jesus and he'll help you. But most of all, he'll forgive you. We all need forgiveness. You can run, but you can't hide. You can try and kid yourself with drink and drugs and sex and all the rest of it, but you can't hide from God. God's pursuing you, and he wants you, and he's going to save you if you open your heart to him. He'll come for you and bring you peace and joy and forgiveness. You can run, but you can't hide. God's pursuing you and he's wanting you to come into his kingdom and his love is here for you his love is here for you today Jesus says come unto me 
All you are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And his burden is light, he's full of goodness, he's full of love, and he's full of mercy to you. If you only believe in him and take upon him your salvation, that you believe in him and take that salvation, that Christ will bless you and minister to you and show you his love and show you his grace and show you his peace and show you his joy. Christ's arms are here all the time. They're here every day, crying out. Every day he looks to you. There's an old song, tenderly, softly, Jesus is waiting, waiting for you to come home, come home, come home. Jesus is waiting for you, come home, tenderly, softly, Jesus is waiting, waiting for you to come home. You tried drugs, it ain't working. You tried money, it ain't working. Uh, you okay? How's it doing? You okay? Good to see you, bro. Nice to see you, to see you nice. God bless you, bro. Come home, come home. Jesus is waiting for you to come home. Tenderly, softly, Jesus is waiting. Waiting for you to come home and his love is here. Oh, you might be in a far country. You might say, I don't need God. I, God ain't in my life. I don't need him. He's not around my life. But yes, he is. He's been speaking to you for a long time. He's been working in your life for a long time, but you've not seen it. He sent you someone in the workplace to talk to you. And you, you talk to them about Jesus. That was Jesus coming to you. Jesus has is, is been speaking to you and it's time to listen to him. It's time to hear the call in, in your life. He's been knocking at your heart and there's only one way. It's Jesus' way. That's the only way, folks. Jesus' way. It's better. You know what? You know what I did the other day? You know what I did the other day? I drank. I drank one of them uh, energizer drinks. I thought I'd had rocky fuel. I was, I was running around with them energizer drinks. Listen, Jesus will give you energy. Jesus will give you energy. He'll give you energy. Love, power. is rocket fuel for the soul. Rocket fuel for the soul. Where there's no hope, there'll be hope. Listen, he'll bless you. Bless your marriage. If your marriage is on the rocks and you think, my marriage is doing me head in. I want to run away from my wife. She's doing my head in. Or your, or your husband's doing your head in. You want to run away from him and you can't get, he's just doing your head in. How do you cope with it? Go to God. Go to Jesus. Say, Lord, he's doing me head in. She's doing me head in. And go to Jesus. And both of you go to Jesus. And you'll start to love each other more. Or your career, you're wondering what to do with your career. Well, there's a purpose to your life, a plan to your life. Seek God's plan to your life. God bless you, brother. There's a plan to your life. God has a plan. Okay. Okay, here's, here, here, here. I'll give you a challenge now. I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge anybody here. I'm going to challenge everybody here today. I'm going to put out a challenge now. Are you ready for this? I can prove to you in five seconds there is a God. And you come here and prove to me that evolution's true. I'll give you 10 seconds to come here now and wipe the floor with me and show us that we evolved from apes. And in five seconds, when you give me your evidence for evolution, I'll destroy it in five seconds. Okay? I'll give you 10 seconds. Any PhD in biology, come and take me down. Come on. You got a PhD in biology, come and take me down. Now's your time to shut up a street preacher. So come on down, biology, PhD, take me down right now. And if you don't come, I'm going to give my evidence in five seconds that there is a God. Okay? 
One, two, come on, there must be a PhD in biology. Three, or A level in biology. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nobody's got the bottle in this so-called scientific age to give us the evidence for evolution. Now I'm going to give you the evidence for God. If the evolutionist comes to me and say, Jay, here's the evidence, blah, 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 right? I'll just say to them, here, does that fish have a purpose? Yes. Does that dog have a purpose? Yes. Does that ant have a purpose? Yes. Everything in the universe has a purpose. Where there's purpose, there's intention. Where there's intention, there's a mind. Where there's a mind, you have God. I can take anything in the universe and prove that it is a God because everything in the universe has a purpose. Period. End of debate. End of debate. What's there to debate? An atheist, a very nice atheist, very, very clever atheist, I, I admire him, very, very clever man, called, uh, look him up, he's called uh, something, uh, what's he called now? Not, not, not one of the academic atheists, but a YouTube atheist, very nice guy, Cosmic Skeptic, look him up, very intelligent young man, very intelligent young man, Cosmic Skeptic, I recommend him to you, wonderful atheist, very clever, very nice young man, he said this, Christians make the argument that we're only a few feet from the sun, if we was near the sun, we would burn up. If we were too far the sun, we'd just shrivel up. We're just the right distance from the sun. We're just the right distance from the sun to have life. Now, cosmic skeptic said this. I've got an answer for that, he said. He said, I've got an answer for that. And this is cosmic skeptic. Now, I'm not knocking the guy. Nice guy, lovely guy. I recommend, go listen to him, you'll enjoy him. Nice guy. But if you do, go to my website, jasonburnspreacher.com as well. It's better than Cosmic Skeptic. Anyhow, this nice atheist, lovely atheist, recommend him to go listen to it. He said this. He said, I can answer that question, why the earth is near the sun, not too near the sun, not too far from the sun. I can answer that question. Here's what his argument is. It has to be necessary that everything in the universe where it is, where it's placed, is necessary there. That's his atheist argument. He says that everything in the universe, where it is, has to be there. That's why it's there. Now, does that really answer the question? Does that really answer the question? Why we're just the right distance from the sun? That if we were too near the sun, we'd burn up. If we were too far from the sun, we'd shrivel up. But we're just right in the right distance from the sun, so we can have life. Does that answer the question that cosmic skeptic said that everything in the universe exists because it's necessary so? If something is necessary, it means it has purpose. If it has purpose, it means it has intent. If it has an intent, it means it has a will. If it has a will, it means it has intelligence. If it has intelligence, we get God. So we, he doesn't destroy God. We still get to God. So cosmic skeptic fails. You see, I don't have to prove there is a God. I don't have to prove there is a God. You know there's a God. I'll tell you why. How many of you here get angry at Father Christmas? How many of you get angry at Father Christmas? How many? How many of you have snapped at Father Christmas and said, I've had enough of you and got angry? Or swore at Father Christmas? How many of you? How many of you have snapped at Father Christmas and got angry at Father Christmas? I don't think anybody here. Now here, how many of you have snapped and got angry at God? Now, if there is no God, why do you get angry at him for? You don't get angry at Father Christmas, so why do you get angry at God? It's because you know there's a God, otherwise you won't get angry. You don't get angry at Father Christmas, but you get angry at God. 
That shows you know there's a God. So I don't have to prove there is a God. You know there's a God. And I'm here today on rescue mission to help you wake up and believe. Now you might not believe today, but one day you walk past and you'll say, you know what, that guy's been going eight years now. I've been here eight years, pumping away. I've been in the rain, I've been in the sun, I've been kicked, punched, I've been everything you can imagine has happened to me on the street while I've been preaching. And guess what, I'm still here, you know why I'm here? I've got to be here for one reason. It's because I cared about you. I cared about you, or else I wouldn't be doing it. I won't be doing it when people punch me. People punch me, people kick me, people swear at me. But I do it because I care about you, because I believe this is the truth. That's why I do it. That's why I do it, folks. And you know something? God bless you, brother. Thank you, thank you, God bless you. What's that, bro? I don't know it, I don't know. Amen, bro, amen. Amen, amen. Amen, bro. Amen. Amen. Amen, bro. Amen, brother. And that's what we're here for today. We're here to share about Jesus. And give Jesus, God bless you, bro. To give Jesus to the people so they can know his love and know his peace and joy. And know that you can be forgiven today and restored today. There is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. You don't have to be condemned today, but you can have peace. You can have hope. You can have joy. You can have forgiveness today. Amen, brother. Amen. God bless you. Amen, bro. Amen. Amen, bro. Amen. Amen. Amen, bro. God bless you, brother. Hey, he's better than Johnny Cash. He should have his own record label. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Hey, brother. Yeah. Because, because, because the main reason why we're here is to love God and our neighbor. And one day, there's going to be an initiation, and he's prepared to wait for us by dying on that cross. The world's messed up, would you agree? All right, God bless you, brother. Jesus, Jesus died on that cross so that we could have forgiveness and then when we're forgiven one day he's going to come back and we're going to be with him and all this is going to work it's going to be a new day a new paradise yeah but the main thing is do you know the man yourself in your heart you know like you know like if you have money it goes into your heart it's, it, that's what it is knowing jesus he goes into your heart it gives you the forgiveness and peace it starts by faith having faith Believe it. You know, you sit on a chair, you've got faith there, will Sit on your heart in Jesus and believe that he'll forgive you. In your heart, just rest in his word. He says, he says, uh, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So rest in it, believe it. You see what I mean? I'll give you three things for you, yeah? So... That, that's a track, that's a gospel, and that's another book right there. And I'll give you, uh, have you got a CD player? <laughs> that's sermons, listen to them sermons, and that's about the life of Jesus. You find the language in, in English, it's got different languages, so you find the English. And listen to that brother. Okay. That'll bless you. Yeah.
Well, it's basically drove. What it is, is that Adam and Eve fell and made the snake fell. And that brought the world into a mess. They rebelled against God. And the world, ever since then, has been in rebellion against God and been a mess. But God had a plan to send the, his son, Jesus. And Jesus came and died on the cross as a saviour. For God so loved the world, you know? You know that verse? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So if Christ died on that cross because of his love for you, so that instead of God punishing you for anything you've done wrong, have you ever lied? So if God, instead of God punishing you, Christ has just stood in your place and died for you. He, he, he got your punishment. He said, you get punished. He's dead. Yeah, he died for me. So if you say, Jesus, forgive me. He's paid it for you. You receive that forgiveness. And he comes to dwell in your heart by the Holy Spirit. So do you want that? So if you say this prayer in your heart and mean it, then you become born again today. Do you want to become born again? I pray that in your heart, you just say it in your heart. Right? Dear Lord, I'm sorry for my things I've done wrong. But thank you for dying on the cross for me. Please forgive me and come into my life to be my saviour. Amen. Amen. So you're now, a, you're, you're now born again. You're now a child of God, yeah? You're now saved. So you need to find a church and you need to find somewhere where they teach you the Bible and where you grow. And if you need me, I'm here most days. You, you know that I'm here most days. Yeah, what's your name? Okay, Michael. So I'm here. So where do you live? Mountain. Okay. Well, uh, have you got a good memory? Can you remember JasonBurnsPreacher.com? JasonBurnsPreacher.com.